Hey everybody, Dennis Wood here. Today we're gonna to be going over Garmin VO2 and biking for dummies. When I got into this whole smartwatch thing, this is a Garmin Fenix Sapphire 7 Solar something rather, I was very interested in getting the watch, which is my first, call it uh, sports watch, for tracking fitness in particular. And I got a ways to go, let's be honest here. I was fortunate enough to take a course in exercise physiology as part of my undergraduate degree in biology. And one of the really interesting things about that course was this exploration of performance, anaerobic threshold and VO2 max, among many other things. So I actually got on a treadmill and measured up and got a pretty decent value. I think it was 62 milliliters uh, back in, in the day. I'm a far cry from that today, which um, I'm finding out now based on these VO2 measurements using this Garmin. Turns out the Garmin's quite accurate. I'm not gonna talk about what VO2 max is. There's plenty of videos on it and what it measures but it's basically a performance metric. Now, one of the reasons I looked at the Garmin series in particular was that I knew that it did VO2, but I didn't know how or what you needed to do it. And it, you don't just strap on the watch. Although if you're a runner, it's, it's that easy. You can actually strap on a watch with those VO2 capabilities and go running. Um, I'm not a runner, uh, but that will give you an approximate, uh, a reasonably accurate indication of what your VO2 max is. Now, one of the reasons I gravitated to Garmin in terms of a, my first fitness watch is because I knew that it did a pretty good job of VO2 max um, estimation within 5%. In many examples that I've looked at, it's been closer. So you got a pretty good idea of what your VO2 max is or what your overall cardiovascular fitness level is. So then the question is, well, what do you need? Well, if you're a runner, you need a pair of shoes, I guess, a pair of shorts and just a watch and you can go running. You input your weight, you input your age, and the uh, Garmin software will extrapolate your VO2 based on all of those variables that you've input and does a pretty good job. Now for biking, it's a little bit different because biking is different. Uh, fat bikes in snow, a lot of resistance. Um, a road bike will have far less resistance than say a mountain bike, and the biking styles are quite different. So the question is, well, what do you need for accurate VO2 measurement on a bike and it doesn't matter what kind of bike. I happen to have a mountain bike here, I've got a fat bike. Now, the question is what watch and what bike computer will calculate VO2 max or has that functionality? Easiest thing you can do is go to Garmin's site and look up their pedals and then see what's compatible because their pedals are basically power meters. So in order to measure power, you need something that's VO2 capable, uh, VO2 max capable, um, that also has the ability to measure power. So you can go to their website go to the pedals and look at what's compatible. And you see a big line of watches and bike computers that are compatible. Again, my preference was to go with the watch so that I can, as I said, track other things besides biking. Now, the title of this video is Garmin VO2 and Biking for Dummies. So we'll try and keep this as simple as possible. If you're gonna go with a watch, then you've already got a heart rate monitor on your wrist, not the most accurate one. So a lot of folks will recommend that you get a heart rate monitor like this one, Polar H10. Um, Garmin also sells a heart rate monitor. It's a bit more expensive. The H10 is reasonably priced, works great. Uh, it just mounts, uh, you just snap on the sensor. It's got a couple electrodes and you wear it basically in this area on your bare chest. Just wet the terminals, put it on and off you go. So heart rate monitor is not a bad thing to have. The watch can give, can provide heart rate information, just not as accurate, especially if you're biking because your wrist is moving around and it's probably not making consistent good contact with your wrist. Um, if you have hair on your arms, that sort of thing, these are all variables that go in. Uh, so this heart rate monitor is gonna be more accurate. Now, the other thing you're gonna need for a bike, unfortunately, is you're gonna need a power meter. And what's a power meter? A power meter is either a set of pedals or a set of cranks or a crank that will communicate how much force you're putting into your pedaling. Um, and it communicates with, uh, with you in terms of uh, calculated watts. So if you're biking, if you do have a power meter, if you add one to your bike, suddenly your Garmin will give you watts and it'll show you how much power you're putting in, which is quite useful in the world of performance. Again, for fitness, I'm just more interested in where my progression on VO2 is moving. Right now it's pretty bad and I'm looking to make it better. So um, we'll show a few close-ups of that. Uh, in this particular case, I'm using the four triple I or four III power meter with single crank that was the least expensive solution I could find for this bike. The other thing uh, that I think is really useful because GPS 
and distance when you're mountain biking is not all that accurate. In other words, if I'm using the watch or a GPS with no speed sensor on the bike, it's going to miss about 10% of my riding if I'm mountain biking. So a 10K ride will look to be a 9K ride. And again, if you're trying to get accurate VO2 and workout information, you kind of want to know your distance. So one of the things I did is added a speed sensor to the bike, a Garmin speed sensor. We'll just look at what that is. So it's basically three parts in my mind if you want to get a nice accurate VO2. It's a heart rate monitor, it's a speed sensor, and it's the power meter, which is uh, necessary. So that those three bits um, are what you would want to get accurate VO2 numbers from a Garmin watch. And that's it. So we'll go ahead and, and take a closer look at some of these components. Hopefully that'll give you a head start if you're looking to undergo the same journey that I have undergone here. All right, so this is the Garmin speed sensor. You can see it's a very simple device. Uh, it just basically goes onto a hub with a rubber band essentially, and um, it will track the rotation speed of the tire. I'll show you in the watch where you probably want to input the circumference of your tire. So you're gonna measure this circumference. Uh, usually the easiest way to do that is just put it on the floor and measure it out. So this is the M8100 crank, which is a little bit of a, a step up from the STX crank that's actually on this bike. But the good news is that physically they're exactly the same. So basically the M8100 was an exact uh, physical match, slightly different color you can see, but I don't care about that. And again, you're probably gonna wanna take some electrical tape like this and just wrap it around this basically to make sure that that cap doesn't fall off. So once you have your power meter and your heart rate monitor and speed sensor, you basically are gonna go into settings on your watch. You're gonna go into sensors and accessories. And this is where you're gonna add them. And I've already added them. So you can see the power meters there, the heart rate monitor, it's searching for it right now. And the speed is off because the wheel isn't spinning, but this kind of gives you uh, an idea of how these things are configured. You can see that Ant Plus connection, which is what you want. You don't want to use Bluetooth. You want to use the Ant Plus. And again, one of those questions that I had a trouble answering when I was looking online. Wheel size can be put in auto or manual, and I chose to set it as manual. And you can see I've input 2,285 millimeters for accurate speed readings from these wheels. If you switch your wheels out, obviously you're going to want to change that. So that's about it. That's your sensors and accessories uh, attached to the watch. One of the things you want to do uh, with the Polar, with the Garmin, and with the 4i is you're going to want to download their app onto the phone. And with that app, you can upload or update the firmware on each device. So there's a good possibility uh, the Garmin, I think when I first attached it, needed an update. The Polar HR needed a firmware update from the app, and so did the 4ii. One of the other nice things about the 4ii power meter is it includes the Apple Find My functionality. So you can basically set up your crank kind of like an AirTag, which is kind of cool if somebody steals your bike and they don't know about four III cranks. Um, they're going to be in for a bit of a surprise because you're going to be able to track the bike. So there you go. Garmin VO2 performance tracking for dummies. Hope you found this useful. As always, a like and subscribe would be very much appreciated. Have a good day.